Today we're taking a look at our 4x5 to L mount stretch adapter. This is a stitching adapter that adapts a full frame L mount camera like the Sigma FP to the back of a 4x5 film camera. And this adapter has sliding mechanisms on it so you can actually slide the camera back and forth to different parts of the image circle of a 4x5 camera's lens. You capture multiple images, you then stitch these images together for a stitched digital image that is close to a 4x5 camera's field of view. Now this stitching adapter works best with 4x5 view cameras that give you more control over the focus. With smaller press cameras like Graflex cameras that don't give you as much bellows control, it's harder to get infinity focus and you will have to have the lens all the way recessed into the back for the adapter to allow you to focus to infinity. The other thing about this adapter is it only works with 4x5 cameras that have a graph lock back. That's because this mounting system requires a graph lock back to mount. Uh, so if your 4x5 camera does not have a graph lock back, this adapter will not work with it. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to mount an L-mount camera on the back of this adapter, how to mount this adapter on a 4x5 camera, and then how to use the different stitching functions to capture different types of stitched images. As you can see, we've got four different stitch options here. We're gonna look at all four of these options, but first let's take a look at mounting an L-mount full frame camera on the front. Now this specifically is designed for full frame L-mount cameras. There are some L-mount cameras out there, discontinued now, that are APS-C crop. Those will not work very well with this adapter because these stitching markings are designed for a full frame sensor. Mounting the camera on the adapter is pretty simple. You're just going to line up the mounting dots but there is one thing to look out for. See how this camera has a grip? This is an additional grip this camera actually generally doesn't, but let's assume you're using an L-mount camera like this with a grip. You're going to want to first extend this mounting part out. You don't wanna leave it flush. You wanna actually extend it out so you have clearance for the grip on your camera. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the included Allen key, you're gonna loosen this flange distance adjustment screw. It was already loose, so we were able to slide it out. And then once you have it at the position you want, you're gonna tighten the screw like that. So now we have it locked in place. Then you're just going to take your L-mount camera, line up the mounting dot on your camera with the mounting dot on the adapter, press the camera into the adapter and rotate it to lock it into place. There we go, we've got our L-mount camera mounted on the front. And then to create different types of stitched images, first off you have to loosen this knob here, and then you can actually use these guidance markings to slide to different positions to capture different types of stitched images. Now, depending on what type of stitch you're doing, sometimes you're going to want the camera horizontal like this, other times you're gonna want the camera vertical, and you can do that by simply rotating the camera, it allows you to rotate it so you can have it vertical or rotate it horizontal. So uh, depending on what you're doing, some shots you're going to want to have the camera horizontal and other types of stitch shots, you're gonna want the camera vertical. And as you can see, as I'm sliding the adapter back and forth, we're moving where the sensor of the L-mount camera is to capture different parts of the image circle of your 4x5 camera. Okay, that's how to mount an L-mount camera on the back of this adapter. Now let's show you how to mount this adapter on a 4x5 camera. Mounting the adapter on a view camera is super simple. Obviously, you need to make sure it has the graph lock back. You're gonna find the line here on the front of the stretch adapter, and you're gonna line it up with this channel here, as you can see. You're gonna press the adapter into the graph lock back until it's snugly in place. And then you're just going to lock these two flanges, one on the bottom, one on the top. And there we go. Now we have the adapter adapted to our four x five camera. We can loosen this knob and we can slide the adapter using these markings to capture different parts of the image circle of our four x five camera. 
Also, depending on what kind of stitch we're doing, we can either have the camera horizontal or we can rotate it to be vertical. The other thing you have to do when you are stitching with this camera is you have to flip the graph lock back upside down. You don't actually flip the adapter. The adapter stays locked to the back. You actually loosen the entire graph lock back, the standard graph lock back from the four x five camera, flip it over and then lock it back into place. And then you can slide and capture your stitch images with the sensor lower on the image circle of the 4x5 camera. Then of course, when you need to go back to the normal mode, just remove the entire graph lock back from the 4x5 camera and then lock it back into place. The other limitation with press cameras is most of them do not have a flippable graph lock back. So when you mount our 4x5 stitching adapter on the back, so we'll lock it into place, we are locked in. We can't flip this upside down, so we can't capture the other row of images. We're locked in, so we can only slide left and right. So we can only capture one row of images rather than the two that we can capture with a field or view camera. Okay, we've got the L mount camera mounted on the back. We've got the adapter mounted on a four x five camera. We've picked an aperture and we've focused the four x five camera. And we've also made sure all of the exposure settings are locked in on the L mount camera. Now it's time to pick a stitching format. Let's start with the horizontal orientation, the 90 by 44. You're gonna be following the blue dots and you're gonna be lining up this white dot with the blue dots. So you're gonna start by loosening this knob. You're gonna slide all the way to the left, lining up this white dot with this blue dot. Take a picture. You're gonna to slide to the center, lining up the white dot with the white dot. Take a second picture. Then you're gonna to slide to the other blue dot on the other side, take a third picture. Then to flip the camera upside down, you're actually going to remove the standard graph lock back on the four x five camera, mount it upside down. After we flipped it over, we're already lined up with the blue dot. So we're gonna take a fourth picture. Then we're gonna to slide to the center white dot, take a fifth picture, and then slide to this blue dot and take a six picture. We've taken six images of six different parts of the four x five view cameras image circle. We can then bring these six images into post, stitch them together. I'm using Photoshop's photo merge for a 90 by 44 millimeter stitched image. Next, let's do the horizontal orientation 68 by 44. We're gonna be using the red dots this time. Now this is only a four image stitch. So we're gonna start by sliding the white dot to the red dot taking a first picture, slide to the second red dot, take a second picture, flip the whole graph lock back over on the camera, take a third picture, and then slide back to the other red dot, take a fourth picture. We then take these four images into Photoshop, use the photo merge function, stitch them together in post for a 68 by 44 millimeter stitched image. Okay, next up we're doing vertical orientation. So we're gonna wanna rotate the camera so it is vertical rather than horizontal. We're gonna start by doing the 60 by 60 millimeters and this uses the white dots. And I'll show you right here. You're going to slide to this first white dot here. You're not gonna use the outer white dots. You're gonna use the three inner white dots. Take a picture, slide to the center white dot, take a second picture. Slide to this right dot, take a third picture. Then we're going to flip the whole graph lock back over, take a fourth picture, slide to the center white dot, take a fifth picture, and then slide to this white dot, take a sixth picture. And we're gonna stitch these six images together in post for a 60 by 60 millimeter stitched image. Okay, finally, we're going to do the 78 by 60 millimeter vertical orientation stitch. This actually takes 10 photos and the four images that we capture on the outer edges actually have a lot of overlap, but that's just the best way we found to do it. So we're gonna be using both the inner and outer white dots to capture these 10 images. We're gonna start by sliding over to the far right white dot, take our first image, slide to the inner white dot, take a second image, Slide to the center white dot, take a third image. Slide to the inner white dot on the other side, take a fourth image. Slide to the outer white dot, take a fifth image. 
remove the graph lock black, flip it over, and we're already lined up with that outer white dot. Take a six image, slide to the inner white dot, take a seventh image, slide to the center white dot, eighth image, ninth image, 10th image, and then we have 10 photos. <laughs> we're gonna take these 10 photos into Photoshop, use the photo merge function, stitch them together for a 78 by 60 millimeter stitched image. Here are a couple quick notes for creating stitched images with this adapter. First off, you don't want a lot of movement in your scene. If you're photographing trees and there's a lot of wind, it can mess up the stitch. Or if you're photographing a crowd of people or traffic, those images will not stitch great together because people are moving around. So make sure your subject is fairly still. Or if you are shooting movement, make sure the exposure is long enough that the motion blurs together. For instance, if you're doing architecture with people walking around, do a long enough exposure for each shot that the motion of the crowds are completely blurred. Also remember to keep your camera's ISO, shutter speed, and color balance the same between the stitched images. It's best to shoot manual mode and have all of the settings set manual so the camera isn't changing any of the settings between the shots. You want all the images to have a consistent color cast, a consistent exposure, so they stitch good together in post. Finally, keep an eye on light. If there's clouds moving across the sky between those images, if the exposure on your scene is changing, that can also create a bad stitch. So make sure it's consistently cloudy or consistently sunny. If you're shooting on a day where there's cloud movement, make sure the images that you capture all have a consistent cloudy or sunny look. The 4x5 to Elmont stretch also comes with an included carrying case, which is really nice. So you can keep it nice when you're moving it around, keep it in your camera bag. You just slide it in like this into the case and you Velcro it shut. And there you go, you've got the four x five adapter nice and protected in a nice case. Okay, that'll do it for our in-depth look at our four x five to L mount stretch adapter. Now I realize this adapter is fairly complex, especially getting it to work with vintage four x five cameras. So if you have any specific questions about this adapter, comment below, I'd love to help you out. Just a reminder, this adapter only works with 4x5 cameras that have a graph lock back, and it works best with 4x5 view cameras that have a lot of flexibility with the bellows adjustment. If you mount this adapter on a press camera, you are gonna be more limited in what you can do. Generally, those cameras have wider lenses, and those lenses to focus to infinity need to be much closer to the film plane. So if you're using this adapter with one of those cameras, you are gonna to have to have the lens very inset into the camera. You actually won't even be able to pull the lens out. It'll have to be completely recessed into the back of your press camera. Just wanted to remind you that at the end of this video, in case you are looking to use this with a press camera, you will be able to use it, but it will be limited in what you can do with it. So once again, comment below if you have any questions. Also click the link in the description below to get your 4x5 to Elmont stretch adapter today. We also make 4x5 stitching adapters for other types of camera mounts. So check out the links below for those as well. Also, click right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos just like this one.